Hi, I am Dr. Sharjeel and you are watching my YouTube channel. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Now today we have got a very interesting uh, phacoemulsification in a constricted pupil. We tried to dilate the pupil uh, pre-op uh, with uh, all the resources available like with a phenylephrine, with tropicamide, uh, with uh, alkane drops, uh, but in vain. And now per up uh, we have first put uh, when we made the ports, we put uh, pure adrenaline intracamerally, but the pupil didn't dilate. So the cataract was NS3 so we decided to proceed with phacoemulsification I have done 8 or 9 cases with phaco in a pinpoint pupil and today I would like to show you how to perform it so after staining the anterior capsule with blue dye now I am starting capsulorexis now capsulorexis is of paramount importance in such cases you have to proceed and perform capsulorexis behind the iris if you and there is a technique that it should not go radial like here you can clearly see that the outermost edge of the capsulorexis is not visible because if you perform capsulorexis in your eyesight then it will be very small and phacoemulsification in a small pupil is extremely difficult in a small rexis is extremely difficult now we are performing the hydrodissection now hydrodissection is also very important because you have got a very small space to work make sure you perform adequate uh, hydrodissection and you separate the nucleus from the capsule in this challenging case i tried all the medical options to dilate the pupil but i didn't use the iris hooks to dilate the pupil the other method is to try to stretch the pupil at three and nine o'clock points with squint hooks or dialer and chopper and the third invasive method is a sphincterotomy sphincterectomy with venous scissor now all these procedures damage the shape of the pupil permanently so in order to avoid that anatomical disfigurement i will Will proceed phacoemulsification in this pupil in this small pupil without the aid of these mentioned procedures so now i am trying to make side ports so now i am making the side ports and now with 50 phaco power and 350 vacuum with autoly machine I would now start the I have just sucked the anterior capsule and now I have started the I am making the groove in the center the technique in this case is uh, the same my tilt and top technique I try to bury the phaco probe uh, within the matter of the nucleus and then try to elevate it and with the help of the second instrument uh, I try to chop it into many pieces but here we have got limitation that uh, for most uh, working time I use the dialer or chopper or the second instrument uh, to keep the iris uh, from chafing uh, and uh, to retract the iris and uh, try to continue the phacoemulsification so it's a very and you also know that when you continuously touch the iris uh, the iris uh, becomes floppy and uh, but uh, here our main aim is uh, to complete uh, phacoemulsification successfully in this uh, pinpoint constricted pupil uh, and don't uh, touch the iris with phaco probe as well so it's quite a challenging uh, situation but as i have performed previously eight nine cases successfully so now i have now 
divided the nucleus and uh, in the center I have eaten up the nucleus but uh, peripherally as the view is not uh, great so in this technique then now I have put viscoelastic and now with the help of a second instrument I am trying to dislodge the outer nuclear pieces and bringing those pieces into the center in a working area now again I put viscoelastic so it's a very patient technique you have to give lot of time you have to now I am emulsifying the pieces which I brought in the center with the help of a second instrument with the help of a dialer and also make sure that your view is clear and you are able to appreciate the posterior capsule as well now you should only perform fake emulsification in such pinpoint pupils when you have previous successful experience like in previous seven or eight cases of pinpoint pupils thanks to god intraoperatively no pcr or adhesions or nuclear drop occurred yes in two cases iris chafing occurred but not very serious complications so if you have got that memory and technique then you should proceed with phaco emulsification in such cases so and the most of the i am not using much phaco but i am trying to sucking the nuclear outer nuclear pieces with the vacuum but uh, the problem is that you can't uh, increase the vacuum because if you increase the vacuum to 400 or 450 then there are higher chances of uh, iris chafing and iris damage sphincter damage and our main aim is that if we are not using the gadgets uh, like iris hooks uh, or uh, sphincterotomy so then we have to preserve the pupil as well now again I have put the viscoelastic and now I am bringing the outer nuclear pieces all around that were hidden behind the iris into the pupillary area now I am putting viscoelastic to deepen the anterior chamber now this was a very old lady uh, where there were no pseudo exfoliative material but the iris was uh, atrophic uh, muddy and pupil was not dilating maybe she have uh, used uh, anti glaucoma because uh, um, drops uh, for a long time So now, now you see this technique um, it's a very challenging case if the nucleus is hard very hard then straight away convert it to extra cap but as the nucleus was not that much hard so I tried uh, that I should proceed with the emulsification and now you can see that I have removed the nucleus and now as the I have told you that uh, the case was not uh, too much uh, hard so there are a lot of cortical sheets and just look at this constricted pupil so now you have to do patiently irrigation and aspiration with Simcoe cannula and you have to remove each and every piece because pupil will be constricted regarding of what you do post up as well so if you leave some cortical matter inside and uh, on the first and second post op day it comes into the visual axis then the patient will again become functionally blind and then you have to reopen the anterior chamber uh, 
सो इट्स बेटर दैट यू वर्क हार्ड इनिशियली एंड ट्राई टू रिमूव ऑल द लेंस मैटर ऑल द क्वाटिकल शीट्स नाउ यू कैन सी दैट द पीपल हैज कंस्ट्रिक्टेड इवन मोर दैट बिकॉज constantly we are trying to keep away the pupillary margin with the help of a second instrument and as much as you touch the iris it becomes floppy and more constricted so no this fine irrigation expiration is also a very technical step because you are performing it blindly so make sure you don't engage the margins of anterior capsule otherwise you will do zonular dehiscence now with the side port superior lens matter i usually remove with the side port so it was quite a challenging case i thought i should share with my viewers if you have the facility of iris hooks um, try to use iris hooks and don't try to perform phacomalsification in such a constricted pupil but as uh, and this setup we didn't have iris hooks so and i had previous experience a successful experience of phacomalsification in pinpoint pupil so that's why i proceeded you can see the lens matter clearly now these sheets are very difficult to disengage but you have to remove each and every cortical sheet that you are able to perceive and we have also performed uh, the phacomalsification with just 2.5 ml local anesthesia that's why you can observe the movements of the eyeball of this patient uh, patient was also not uh, very cooperative she was constantly moving her eyeball you can see the now you can see that whenever we try to suck the lens matter the iris also comes into the simco now you can clearly see the white sheets in the pupillary area so these posterior cortical sheets were just attached to the posterior capsule and they were very difficult to dislodge but you have to remove each and every cortical matter there was a little bit uh, cortical sheets superiorly so i am trying to remove those uh, from the side port so now we have almost uh, removed all the cortical sheets that were visible now we have deepened the anterior chamber with uh, viscoelastic you can see the movements of the eyeball and now we are implanting the foldable intraocular lens now just look as the pupil is constricted but uh, the good thing is that the first haptic has been uh, into the pup in, under the pupil so now with the help of a dialer from the side port uh, 
we will push the now we have pushed the IOL into the bag and if uh, you are uh, feeling difficulty in uh, retrieving the cortical sheets uh, then one technique is that try to implant the IOL first when you when you are implanting the IOL uh, the IOL rubs uh, against the posterior cortical sheets uh, and try and dislodge it like here after implantation of the IOL uh, we have also got the leverage that now we are safe uh, the chances of a posterior capsular rupture are minimized because there is a support of uh, IOL and now we can easily remove the remaining cortical sheets as you can see here now after implantation now almost all the cortical sheets they are dislodged and now we are removing you should sweep 360 degree behind the iris and into the under the anterior capsule to remove all the cortical matter if you leave cortical matter and despite of the fact that it didn't come in the visual access area it will make the posterior capsular opacification within two to three months and then you have to perform early a capsulotomy and you know in this case uh, it will be very difficult so we have completed uh, this uh, challenging case uh, and now we are hydrating the wounds and you can see the iol shine and the cornea thank you